<laughs> Hi, everybody. That is Sarah Hall. I love your videos because, like, is like when you've been watching Sarah Hall, a lot of the introductions is just always you're always like, "Hi, everybody." <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, that's, that's Sarah Hall." So, <laughs> that's me <laughs> hi guys <laughs> amazing and i mean for i guess an introduction is in order and i mean there's so much to say about you and so many different titles because you're an overachiever so I, I guess i could say how i've grown to know you and in simplistic terms not new age where people are like what's a light worker i don't know uh, uh. so basically how i've come to know you is just basically you know a spiritual teacher and a healer and then someone that works through, you know, the art of healing through, you know, I guess through God, you could say, the manifestation of God through sound therapy. I mean, you have all these amazing, you know, beautiful like meditation CD or not CDs, but on YouTube that's available for people. So it's like you work that way. And one of one of the ways you could say it in, in newer age terms is a light healer, a light worker. You, you just you work with energy. Yes, yes, yes. I love to do that. I'd say anything that brings um, healing and light and love and goodness to the world, I feel inspired and happy to do. And uh, yeah, I guess you could say that's what I, I feel my, my life purpose is, is just to share that as much as I can. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what's great is too is like when I'm when I when I, when I'm getting kind of in the zone and like the, the ceremonia and I'm like call you on your radio show and things, how everything when I'm um, involved with you, like as in, you know, maybe on a radio show or something, everything resonates with like this collective consciousness of people that get together. And like, I, maybe I call and I talk about maybe a little bit about, about my, the book I'm writing, yeah. which is turning into a booklet. And right now it's currently a leaflet, but no, <laughs> no, it's actually, I wrote a couple of chapters, so it's good. But then somebody else will call like with the same thing, or you'll pull the same card and go, wow, I'm seeing like a same thing, a theme here, because you got the same card as that guy. And then they're like, yeah, I, I'm trying to write this book. It's <laughs> annoying at me and about how I got in the country. And, and you're like, Gee, like, and so everything kind of goes that way. And the reason why I'm leading towards this is yeah. because um, you know, a couple of days ago, you know, we talked and I said, hey, so what are the things maybe that I can ask you that you like to maybe talk about or touch on? And you're like, nah, just put me on blast. Just ask me anything. But <laughs> in all fairness, just in case. You know, here are some questions that I'm, you know, usually people ask me and things like that. And so I'm at church and there's this, right? And the, the first two questions you pose on your email are the, the in exact same order as the questions in those leaves. And it was about, you know, yeah. your life, like what you, because you say that people ask, like, what do you do and why do you do it? And right, right. So it's like very similar. The first question was, is most people can tell you what they do. Um, many can tell you how they do it. But the real question of a, purp a purposeful life is why you do what you do. It is, you know, why that gives the meaning of life. And I'm sure that's basically one of your reasons, but you're very insightful. So I'm pretty sure, like, what else feeds your spirit? Like, uh, expand on that, I guess, because that's kind of a general, like, yeah, everybody knows that what they do is because they want to add meaning to their lives and others. Yes, yes, absolutely. Well, I guess I've always felt a calling um, to do this kind of work. Um, I started connecting with um, angels about maybe, gosh, a, a long time ago, maybe 15, 20 years ago. Um, I was feeling very, very um, kind of immersed in these angel experiences that I would get from time to time. And I was um, very, uh, you know, sort of sensitive to spiritual energy from the time that I was a child. Um, but when I started to work with angels, that's when I really got the inspiration to um, make this work that could help people because I noticed that it was making a very healing difference in my life and that there was a purpose to having a, a, an openness to the spirit world or to be able to um, gain knowledge or information about that sort of thing. So um, my inspiration from there was just to, to help people to make a difference in their lives. And um, I had the experience as well through, you know, spiritual teachers that would teach, um, you know, about consciousness, um, angels, spirituality, all kinds of different things. And it would make such a huge difference in my life, such a huge difference that um, it just kind of gave me the inspiration that was like, gosh, if I can pass down um, just a little tiny smidgen of this stuff that I'm getting, and if it lit up one other person's life, or it made one other person feel safer or happier, or gave them more hope or direction or anything like that, then 
I mean, I think that that would give me a sense of real meaning and real purpose. And that's, um, so that's what I feel guided to do. And it brings me great joy. So yeah, so it, you know, obviously it does, it brings you, it brings you fulfillment, but I'm a, I'm a big believer that when we serve our purpose, um, our purpose serves us and that yes, it can bring a, a major sense of um, fulfillment or being on track and, um, you know, being aligned with what you're supposed to do. So, um, so yeah, I guess that's, that's why I do it is, is the joy of seeing people heal and seeing people inspired and sharing and oh as you mentioned too just the sense of community like you said you know it's um it's amazing to connect with other people and just to see people supporting one another in a a, a kind of a communal or group uh setting and you're right there are lots of synchronicities with regard to the um you know the people that will call in to um to the through your through the eyes of your angels podcast um and get messages through that so yeah yeah, by the way, yeah, she has a really an amazing uh, a radio show. And, and not only that, there's like so many, there's, there's a lot of content into uh, other people on that radio station. And it's called, uh, what, Project Bring Me yes. Back to Life, right? Project Bring Me to Life, That's yes. Awesome. Project Bring Me to Life. Yeah, and there's uh, even that one lady that uh, was on your show and we talked, I, f I forget what her name was, but she was, uh, she was like a Reiki. And, uh, yes. On there. Yeah. It's, and I noticed like what you were saying, um, where you said to like, even if it, you just resonate and you're able to like reach just one person and um, uh, like about a little over a year, maybe two years ago, uh, I was talking to Wayne Dyer and uh, before he passed away, mm -hmm. he said that exactly what you said, because I was saying, you know, if this book could, you know, even if it reaches a small audience, it doesn't have to be like well known. And he said what you said, He's like, well, you know, Rocco, even if it reaches one person. You, yeah. you, you fulfilled what you're you're here to do is like just one like you said one person it doesn't have to be even a small audience it could just be one person that you mentored and you right. changed their life right and it's true because there's always two that one person that might have changed or made your life better that you always think about and maybe that person just really just reached you not anybody else and so really what mattered was that one person he reached or she reached and i thought it was great too i had this this, this, like, I need to talk to him. And like, you know, because he inspired me through this, this book and this lecture, it's called uh, Inspiration, Your Ultimate Calling. And, um, you know, and, and within a day or two, I was able to get on it. I was like, oh, his radio show, got on there and talked to him. And I couldn't believe it. Like, I'm talking to Wayne Dyer. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking him, because he's like supposed to be the ultimate life coach about my book and what I should do. And it was great. I talked to him and then it was like, I'm glad I did that because then shortly after, he passed away and um, a couple of days ago, sometimes I feel his energy and I was at a, I don't never really, but someone's like, go to this library. You know, they're having this book sale, do it Saturday. And I'm like, nah. and I go and I, and I see that there's these, these uh, deck of cards and they're like $1.50 and they're Wayne Dyer. And then today, before I'm talking to you, I look and I actually, it's like, it's from that book. It's, it's, it's inspired by inspiration, your ultimate calling, which is inspired life. And I was like, Dude, like not only is this in the cards, this is like what draw me to him, you know, yeah. like, like, wow, this guy, this is why he's amazing. Like I've seen little clips and things, but once I saw that, I was like, wow, you know, so three silly questions for you. Right. <laughs> so I, I, I'm the person that I come up with like rumored word and people like that is not a thing or, you know, I'm going to go put on my jogging pants. They're like, dude, it, it sweats. No one's ever said jo so, but rumored word on the internet. A, year, a couple of years ago, I'm looking, trying to see if there's more uh, meditations that you have that aren't maybe on YouTube, like a download or something. And I come across, I think it's an old biography of yours. And it said, because you have such a beautiful voice, it says that you, or maybe still do, practice and took up opera singing. I was like, Yes, <laughs> that is true. That is true. <laughs> um, I, I was, I trained to be an opera singer for many, many years. Um, I did it all through my college years. Um, I even did uh, part of a master's degree in vocal performance and I, I performed, uh, you know, in a lot of different um, classical music kind of settings. Wow. Um, and that was my, that was my thing for such a long time, and it, you know it's it's still my thing. Um, I'd love to give it more attention and to to maybe share it a little bit more. And um, you know who knows, maybe I'll be doing that sometime soon. Um, but yeah, I, I, I singing and performance that was my my absolute first love and first calling in life, and uh, I still do it. Yep. 
<laughs> yeah, this is where I was having. I was okay. Oh yeah, here's funny thing. Well, we'll get to the. We'll do the three silly questions. So that was one. Then the other one was okay. Um, just as you were saying, so you were involved in classical music, and you're like this amazing person. And I know a lot of amazing people like in person that live, you know, 15, 20 minutes away that were friends. We actually not even met on the internet. It's like met through friends or whatever. And I'm not like you know a big fan, but I know they do things. And I have like this one girl. That's so just like, she's like my uh, Sarah Hall that lives here in the Bay Area. Um, oh. You know, she's tall, she's beautiful, and she's amazing. And she's went through like about four different schools of, you know, esoteric arts like BPI, which is Berkeley yeah. Psychic Institute, Intuitive Way, Hands Analysis, music, just like you. You said you're an opera singer or were or yeah. still am, but you, you're very, very musically inclined. But I mean, I'm not her biggest fan. I even did like, I did uh, her first CD, I did a, uh, you know, artwork for it. And I, I don't have her in my iPod, put it that way, but I have you in my iPod. <laughs> are you, are, do you have any friends that are just like, that are your fans or, you know, in the sense of like, oh, the newsletter, oh, I just listened to that, you know, meditation you did. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Are, yeah. are basking in your knowledge that are, that know you or just that that's what she does. She reads her <laughs> cards and it's fun. And, but, uh, you know, I don't sit there and ohm out to her, you know, <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I, I guess, uh, you know, my friends know what I do, um, you know, with, with my work and everything like that. And I've had uh, uh, several different friends who have been so um, supportive to me on, on the journey of just kind of learning to expand what I do. So I had friends of mine that would be like my guinea pigs when I was first learning how to um, communicate with the angels or read cards, for example, and do th different things like that. And they helped me a lot because they were great to experiment with and get some feedback from and I still you know we still share with um, with, with with things like this I'll, I'll bounce ideas off of um, you know some of my friends and um, they you know they'll still inspire me so so yeah absolutely absolutely still uh, kind of keep that connection strong yeah because I, I noticed like from from uh, your friends seem pre pretty uh, articulate and fun and, and entertaining themselves like that I, I don't know exactly but the no-nonsense man his name I think is Zachary and he's really fun, but you can tell he's very intellectual when he goes. Into yes, it. that's in Zachary Winchester, and he's actually the nonsense man. He's the opposite of the no nonsense man. He is the nonsense man. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's that's him. He's you know he's very similar. Um, it's funny because he's very uh, he's he's very much in the world of like comedy and yeah. he does rap and a lot of different performance art and stuff like that but there is so much um that we agree on and that like our work kind of intersects a lot because mm -hmm. He too, um, you know, he's a, he's a light worker, more undercover than I am, yeah. I would say. Um, he wouldn't be self-proclaimed as such, I guess, but um, he is very, very um, spiritually inclined. He has uh, inspired me a lot with, with some of the ideas and messages and thoughts that have come through um, his own spiritual experiences. And I've just gotten a world of, of different profound, you know, kind of inspirations from him, from his work. And even, gosh, if you just really listen to the lyrics in his rap, you know, it's like, wow, this is really metaphysical, spiritual stuff. But like I said, he he likes to be a little bit more um, entertaining. Radar. Like he's he's very like, yeah, yeah. So it's weird. He reminds me. Of, there was this one person that some people like they they use him to make fun of people. But he actually, I looked into him. Um, I'll send you a link. I know you probably heard it. I forget his name. But he has long hair, and he makes fun of you know metaphysical. And everybody thinks he's just like maybe some guy that's making fun of it. And yeah. one day I looked into it and he has, there's like a group of people he's with and they do retreats and everything. And he was just like, you're no nonsense, man. Somebody that's on there kind of getting people like, oh, that's funny. But then if you look into his profile, he's like a very spiritual, he has teachings about, you know, different things, depression and all these people in seminars. I was like, oh my God, this guy isn't just about comedy. Um, he has like, there's one that he has like a shirt and it says something like, spiritual as f or something but i'll, I'll yeah, show you i know who you're talking about yeah, yes that guy and so he really has a practice his seminars are very expensive but they seem fun if i can afford it i'd go one day but i think for now i'm i, I really kind of want to meet you guys uh the no nonsense go to that thing and it seems like i'm being drawn there because now like i say my ex um she actually is going to be out there for a couple of years she's just uh she just uh she's she's with someone and he lives there and he's like this great guy he came by he works for Tesla, and, and and so when he comes by, he was like, "Oh yeah," and he invited me, and then he kept on. I was telling him about oh, I know Sarah, 
and this no-nonsense thing. And he keeps on, well, come on, if you ever come by and you can just take my car, it's about two hours away from here. And I'm like, I got to do that. I was like, man, eventually, that'd be awesome. You, yeah. Jesse looks pretty crazy. He's at the ball. He's like a magician. Like, oh. yeah, yeah, he does, like, he's like a fire performer and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm blessed to be surrounded by a lot of uh, artistic types. <laughs> well, I always I have been help, as, as I said. So, yeah, yeah. The other question was, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll make it short, but um, so yeah, uh, pets. Do you have a pet? And and maybe why, or maybe there's no reason. Maybe it's like I like dogs and cats, and I have both. Or well, I love animals. Have always loved animals, and um, had pets growing up. But I don't have any right now. <laughs> I don't. Um, I I have a couple house plants, and they're like my pets. <laughs> Um, I talk to them and everything. They've got, I've got a connection with them. Um, I'd say I, the only reason I don't have pets at this time in my life right now is because if I do something, I feel like I want to do it all the way. And like, if I want to be a pet parent, I'd want to be the best possible pet parent I could. And so I'd want to make sure that I had the stability of knowing that, okay, I'm going to be living in this place for, you know, a certain number of years, or there's a backyard for the, 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 the pets to run around. And there's, you know, everything that I could give that was just very stable. So, um, so that's why I don't have any pets right now, even though I love them and I love to love on other people's animals. So I, I've always loved that. And I think that, um, animals are just such great, um, you know, kind of earth angels in this world for people. They remove stress. They they uplift our energy. They they help us to um, remember to kind of to, to be in the present moment. They rem they remind us of what's really important in this life. So um, I, I have a deep respect for animals. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, there um, a, there was a book I read like about a few chapters with uh, Sylvia Brown. It was actually interesting. They had. I mean, I think it's called All Dogs Go to Heaven. And now she's a psychic, so she actually made the book instead of the cartoon. Uh, all pets go to heaven and and she gets really into it about how pets are spiritually and it was like really fascinating yeah. you know i totally agree it's to it's totally true and it, the thing is it's like animals have a way of being so um just kind of centered in the present moment you know they're usually not worried about the past or worried about the future sort of thing um that they kind of just go with the flow of everything that's around them they go with the flow of of nature of the earth and that sort of thing and in a way because they're not fighting against the current like we human beings can do sometimes when we're in our ego um it's almost like they're on a little bit of a higher level than we are <laughs> I'm like, I, feel, I feel you know i feel like we are the aliens because we look like aliens compared to like <laughs> the meek shall inherit the earth i think they are like you know animals are like earthlings really and then we're like we got these cars <laughs> we fly around and some of us shave our heads and we don't have, we don't, we have, you know, our skin, they have fur. So sometimes I feel like that, like we were the aliens. People are searching out for aliens. It's like we are, and the pets are here going, we've been invaded by these humanoid aliens, but you know, we're going to let them coexist with us. So yeah. but, and she also talks about too that, um, you know, that they are in heaven right now, you know, that they, that they're, they're, they're their third eye is fully open. Absolutely. So that's why they're able to help us and, and be like this, you know, then they're perfect. Um, we're perfect too, but we have a brain that, you know, has the voice of knowledge and says we're not enough or, you know, these kind of lies that filter in. It's our ego that we fight, you know, yeah. but um, I thought that was great. You know, I, I had another question. <laughs> it was a, just an easy one. Do, what are your devices or do you drink coffee? Like, are you just straight up? Oh, just like, no, I only drink water that's balanced nine or up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink any coffee. I am so sensitive to caffeine. I um, I guess I'm, I'm I'm one of those people that tries to avoid all um things that alter your mood at all because it I, I'm just a sensitive little sponge to that kind of stuff. So um so no coffee for me. Otherwise I'm up all night. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I do actually like to stay, uh, stick to water for the most part. It's funny I, um, that you mentioned like, the, oh, the water that's like nine plus. Um, I don't really, really, I guess, make an effort to go towards alkaline water or anything like that. But I, um, I do like reverse osmosis water and that sort of thing. And that's what I, that's what I drink all day long. Yeah, so. I, th I thought it'd be, you'd be, um, you know, alkaline and distilled. I have a distiller and I just like studied a little bit about water and that's like, if you're not trying to add plumbing into your house or whatever, yeah. you know, and you want something like on a countertop, you know, the closest you're going to get to reverse osmosis and which is even better because it'll eliminate all, you know, the fluorine is to have a distiller. And so I got this distiller 
And then, yeah. you know, then I have my, my H, you know, balanced water too. But there's some people I know that like, they won't drink anything unless it's Fuji or it's alkaline. And I'm just like, dude, and they're vegan, but then they get drunk on the weekends. You're like, dude, like, you get drunk yeah. like three days a week. Why? But I guess it's good. You know, you count to the bad, right? You're vegan, but you drink some beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's good to make an effort with regard to water though. I tell people that all the time, you know, it, it feels so good to, to get a nice, um, you know, really clean source of, of water. So yeah. Yeah. I think that's important. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you met the distiller, like it takes me a while to make, it's like, it really takes an effort. It's not like you just put, put it in, in a uh, you know in a, in a filter and like a pitcher or nothing no you got to like boil it and then you got to clean all the junk that's out of it after you get the water so it, it takes me about maybe about 15 i'd say minutes between waiting six hours and then scrubbing it so it's great but i'll get a two two gallons and you know and then i'll buy water too because i'm not going to be just yeah. boiling water all day when i'm at home especially in the heat but uh well that's good that's good to know uh another thing i thought was kind of amazing okay so you know, let me show you this hold on <clears throat> so uh, a friend and she's like into all these you know different types of celebrity internet you know like so i got this right oh and, beautiful yeah, really nice so, so she lent it to me i don't know she might just give it to me because she there's things she lends to me and then just says keep it or whatever like this it's made by the same person she ended up giving this one to me which is awesome this is a quartz crystals and so I, she said, you know, meditate with this wand and then you're going to feel something. And I usually feel things anyway, but I don't really feel nothing. I mean, it was like, oh, yeah, but I'll keep doing it. I went online to see how you hold it and stuff like that. Even what I watched the guy and the guys always think, oh, get my, my CDs because, you know, that's you know, where it's going to come to life. So a couple of days ago, I'm listening to your um, crystal, uh, you know, uh, the, the, was it the, uh, the Ray? Uh, what's it called? Crystal Ray? <laughs> The crystal heart meditation, yes. <laughs> and so I didn't know, but this thing came alive. Like I'm holding this this wand, and then I became so relaxed that my I can feel my heart, you know, and and, and swaying every time my heart beat, boom! I was like, I felt like I was going out of my body, like, and I was like, wow, this thing is, huh? It works with with her seat, you know. So I, I listened to you, and I was like, this is great. Then I end up getting his CD because I'm with her one day, and she you know, hands me the CDs because she has a couple of them. And so I start listening to him and he starts talking about crystals. So it was like, you're being, you're at a, this crystal meditation and he's talking about the seven rays of God or something like that. And, and crystal, the crystal seven rays of God, but it sounds similar to what you're talking about being mm -hmm. a third ray. And I'm thinking, oh, maybe that's why this thing works is this guy's all about crystals. And I, you know, but then he was kind of spooky. I was like at night, so I went back to my earth and this guy felt like I should have an altar with sacrificed animals, black candles, yeah, and he, he was naming stuff I didn't know. I'm like, I got to look into this. He's like, the seven nations of this and that. I'm like, oh my God, dude. Like, <laughs> so I kind of shut him off. I put you back, so I was able to go to sleep. I had my earth angel. <laughs> and, uh, and then I went, I went to sleep and I, maybe I'll do his in the daytime <laughs> and look yeah. up what he's saying. But um. But uh, yeah, it was funny that that this thing came alive, you know, when, when I was listening to you and it happened to be because this guy's about the seven rays of God. And I looked and it seems like it's very similar through what you're talking about. You and Sonia Shaquette and a few people talk about, you know, you know, this etheric light and it's called the what's it, crystal ray. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I um, I channeled that meditation. That was one of the very first meditations that I ever put out in the world that I ever decided, like, I need to write this down and I need to share this somehow. Again, even if just five people are going to listen to it, that's what it's supposed to be. It um, but it was several years ago and I was... Um, I was doing one of my rituals that I like to do. I was walking in the woods. And um, as I was walking out in the woods, I just had this wonderful um, feeling kind of come over me. It's my meditative time. I'll sit down and meditate in the woods or I'll kind of have like a walking meditation in the woods. And I would spend, um, you know, like an hour or more out there just really kind of connecting with nature. And that particular time, um, I started to just receive this incredible, it began as a feeling and then it evolved into thoughts, words, messages, and ideas. And I had my, um, phone with me at the time or maybe it was even an ipod because it might have been it was several years ago so i remember just taking notes in there and just writing down some of the little things that were coming to me and i when i got home i wrote down this whole meditation for the crystal heart meditation and 
at the time I had never heard of the crystal ray, to be honest. I had no idea what that was. Um, here. <laughs> that wasn't a thing that I, that I really had any you know, knowledge from anybody else on, but um, I channeled it. And what I experienced was the fact that there are, um, I, I'll, I'll just describe it. There are, there are these rays of light, um, you know, in, in the etheric sense that are sort of imbued um, with a certain kind of intelligence, um, a vibration that translates to a certain mode of consciousness. And as I was sort of looking at it while I was in the woods in my meditative state, there was this crystal ray of energy or light, and there was also an indigo ray of crystal energy or, or of energy and light. Um, and I noticed that souls that we... Um, categorize as you're an indigo child or you're a crystal child or you're whatever um you know label them as you will but um i noticed that um there was this image where it's like souls will spend time in this energy in this ray of light or energy before they incarnate into their human life as so as to sort of um become imbued with this intelligence or this kind of sensitivity and then maintain that outlook or that intelligence or that sensitivity while you're in your physical human life um so that was the crystal ray as i was connecting with it i was like there is a whole energy connected to this and it is incredibly heart oriented it goes straight into the heart and it felt like it was very healing for the heart so i was like all right god i'll just write down whatever you know the angel spirit wants to give me for this and that's where that came from so um so yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah that's amazing and then you probably were like pretty shocked when you saw other people that were writing about it like um, i don't know who you know but like sonia choquette talks about exactly wow yeah I, I i will have to actually check out what sonia choquette says because i've never um really delved into what she said about that so thanks to you i will definitely look that up <laughs> yeah, i'll find it and uh it's um it's basically it she talks Talks about it on, on a book called um, Ask Your Guides. Okay, yeah. The audio is great because it's it's pretty much a little bit of the book and it's a lecture and that's how I got introduced to her. And then we started talking here and there before where well, she just was new to Facebook and she didn't know too much, so I was lucky. And so I was able to message her and I thought, you know, whatever. It's like, you know, I'm gonna message Billy Corrigan and yeah, he's gonna get back from this national <laughs> Funny because actually he he lives in Chicago and that's actually one of his spiritual, uh, I think he calls it spiritual counselors or something, is Sonia. Wow. They work together and, uh, and she, he calls her, I don't know if they still do, but it's funny I mentioned, but, but then a month later she got back. And so then every once in a while I'd send her something and six months later, and now, you know, her page turned into likes, so you can't message her. And then I, you know, when I got a hold of Wayne Dyer through Hay House Radio, and then I started calling and talking to her and, um, kind of getting a little into her life because she just got like divorced and she wrote this book and and yeah. so we became a little bit of you know friends and so that's how she kind of agreed to do an upcoming um uh, upcoming interview and i, I do want to go and see uh, her and you know maybe like when they have these hay house like uh these these events where there's all these these authors and these like dude you want to go walk on coals tonight or there's gonna be <laughs> there's gonna be all these things going on but that's like a lot of money but I, I will, I'll, I'll have that money then, because if the universe wants it, right? Right, I'll yes. Be dripping in it, you know? <laughs> so are you, we were talking about indigo, crystal, I think earth angel, but what do you kind of feel you kind of lean towards? Yeah, you know, it's so funny. Um, I've been labeled all of the above <laughs> by different people. Even the rainbow, too. The, you know, the new version is, is, is there's crystal. Yes, the rainbow. I've, I've not yeah. been labeled that one. I don't, I don't think I would venture to say that I'm, that I'm, that I'm a you rainbow. Are. You come in um, colors everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I'd say the description that um, I really identify with, at least growing up in my childhood, was the indigo child description because indigo children are often described as having this um, indomitable spirit, this very stubborn, rebellious, um, intense kind of energy. And that's important because the indigo's purpose is, um, you know, to have an inextinguishable passion or an inextinguishable flame. And um, they are that stubborn or they are that rebellious because, um, you know, the outside forces in the world, you know, at, at the time, at this time, or where, where you, that indigo children find themselves in, is adverse to maybe what they, they plan to change or to do or to uplift um, in this world. So 
they need to not have uh, have that that kind of stuff kind of overcome them. So it's a it's like an inextinguishable sort of like I am very rebellious. I feel very strong about these kinds of things. And when I re read descriptions of what indigos were like as children, I was like, oh yeah, that that was me growing up. I was very uh, very strong willed, very rebellious, all that kind of stuff. Also very sensitive at the same time. Indigos are thought to be very sensitive, um, emotionally sensitive, physically, as I was saying before, sensitive to like you know, like the caffeine or something like that, like <laughs> yeah. way sensitive to all of that kind of stuff. And um, um, yeah, that, that definitely, I, you know, kind of resonated. And, you know, I'm not a person that says like one should subscribe to these specific definitions of you're this kind of soul or that kind of soul and whatever, because I think it's so fluid. And I think that we are so um, unique each as individuals. So when one of these descriptions resonates with you like for me I was like oh yeah I mean you described an indigo and it sounds like my childhood then good it means something to you and maybe you'll learn something from that you can use that for something good um, but you know if it doesn't if, if, if the labels or the all the, that kind of thing doesn't you know maybe resonate then I think that it's fine to kind of explore and expand and just see what else comes to you as you discover yourself through your own spiritual journey through your own experiences so um so yeah I, I like to say like yep that one really resonates but I don't limit myself I guess to like the thought that I am this or I'm that because sometimes also it makes me feel a little bit like I don't I don't know is that is that is that like tickling my ego a little bit to say I am a star child from da 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 or whatever you know, that I don't believe in that it's not that I don't believe that there are souls that incarnate from other um uh, other uh, other star systems or whatever it's just that it's like when it's useful to me personally or when it brings meaning to me personally or when it helps or when it heals then it's like yes I'm all on board and as far as all that other kind of stuff goes it's like yeah that's very interesting and it's awesome and when it resonates with somebody like awesome but um, otherwise I just kind of like let it be and don't really think a ton about that kind of um, stuff I guess <laughs> yeah. yeah well I mean those labels I mean they're a lot better than the labels that I guess conventional wisdom would say as in bipolar you know OCD so it's it's yeah. it's good that we do have that you know I mean and you're a big Doreen fan virtue so um, she was kind of into like a sharing and letting people know oh yeah these you know indigo is kind of this energy and they're gonna you know be rebellious and they're gonna establish things like rights and and what's just and hey if you're you know if you're gay or you're being bullied like we're gonna stand up for that and we're gonna evolve the consciousness of you can be what you want and there's yeah. no reason for anybody to to even not even physically but even to, to force their opinion and judge and make you feel less or weird because you're this or that mm -hmm. and so I thought that was really good you know that that these labels they 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 take away the uh, mental disorder of you know you know you're not bipolar you're just your energy is this your energy is that and it's through indigo it's through crystal you're an earth angel you're a light worker you're a healer but and of course I didn't know if you're rebellious you're that dad's like, <laughs> you're an indigo children get to your room but um so uh, the other thing was uh, oh yeah it's kind of crazy I heard so Doreen Virtue is no longer working with angels I was at at the uh, Angel Heart store and this lady was talking about it. I was like oh, I heard she was a born again Christian but now she she wants to get she doesn't want her names on the cards or anything now which is a you know what it's a whatever she wants to do it's great she's still amazing if she believes that that's maybe a little too much and maybe that's not right in her path hey she's still I'm still gonna watch her she's the born again Christian or nothing she's very interesting beautiful. Uh, person and she's taught us so much and you actually went to one of her classes too huh certified yes 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 I, I did get certified by her and her um angel therapy and uh, mediumship um that was back in 2009 2009 2009 and 2010 I think um but yeah I did I did a couple of her classes and they were wonderful experiences and um I did uh actually I watched one of the videos that she put out to announce her change in her approach and her beliefs and that I, sort of thing. I told you you're the new Doreen Virtue so oh, God. <laughs> I mean you know I mean to me I think all you have to do is basically write a book I mean you're amazing I think hey, House. Oh, well, that's very sweet. Of they're going to be looking for one. Obviously, they're going to be like, she's put down. She's she's you know, off the uh, throne. So, you <laughs> reign. I mean, you're, you're, you're the new generation of of, of virtue. So, 
Well, sure. Well, you know, I, I, I would love to teach again, however God wants me to, I'll do, I'll do as I, as, 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 as I feel, you know, kind of inspired or called to do. And, um, I mean, what can one say about Doreen? I don't know if anyone can fill her shoes because she's, she's, she's incredible. Um, she, and she's, I believe that she, you know, she still is. And I really respect her change. Um, and I understand that, you know, she's got to do, she's got to live her truth. And that's one of the things that I think she's always modeled throughout her life. If you've, you know, if you read any of her books or if you see the things that she said, you know, years, decades back, um, she's just someone who was always so incredibly inspiring because she was so brave in following her truth. She left behind a successful career, for example, in just psychology. I mean, she was already, I think, on like a talk show circuit in the 90s. She was on Oprah talking about just psychology things and um, love and relationships and stuff like that, and then decided to take a huge, very brave leap of faith um, to follow her truth and teach angels. Um, and I believe she's still teaching about the angels. It's just with a different, a little bit of a different twist. I, I Don't quote me on it because I'm not really totally sure, but I think it's just that she's it's still a little bit away from the part where you communicate directly with them or it kind of there's a divination aspect to it I think she's yeah. a little more like of course I love the angels I mean they, they saved her life according to her you know yeah. back the day when she just got started so I don't think she'll ever forget about them um, and I don't think you know her work that she's left behind needs to be um, you know less than than it was for anyone I think we can still appreciate and enjoy and benefit from and heal from the beautiful things that she's you know put out throughout her career and I think it's you know her her growing and changing is great for her and it's actually amazing I do want to share this because I know that's created so much controversy and I understand why I mean I recently saw a video from um a Christian preacher who is blaming, for example, the hurricanes on the gays. They said the hurricanes are happening because God is punishing us because there are gays that exist. So the reason why people are afraid to really um, stand behind the Bible because they're standing next to other people that also say these things that are very controversial and very frightening. Um, and again, I think Doreen is very brave and I don't think she would ever do that kind of thing. I'm sure she'll come from a very love-based approach when she teaches, you know, her religious or Bible-based things. But I will say that there were a few really cool things that came out of that because, um, as you know, I do, I do, um, I do coaching and, um, you know, kind of one-on-one -on -one angel work with people. And I had a couple different clients um, who started asking me about Jesus after Doreen made her statement. And it was amazing because they'd say, you know, I, it made me really wonder about Jesus and want it, want to, you know, come closer to Jesus or know a little bit more about Jesus. And um, I love Jesus. I think Jesus is incredible, and I'm not religious. I was raised Catholic. I went to Catholic school for 12 years. It was really intense, and I don't consider myself religious. I think that all religions have a spark of truth and beauty in them, but I don't feel the need to kind of like you know, teach from a Christian only, you know, sort of background, just because I think it benefits people to be in an inclusive, more open sort of feeling. But that those moments where those those people wanted to really connect with Jesus, I'd say I, ha I myself shared in the healing sessions that we did in connecting with him, and they were profound. Jesus is amazing. It was just like, wow, this is incredible. This is such incredible energy. So um, yeah, I, th I think that, you know, there, there are good things that come out of it and people that are ready to, you know, have something that helps them through Doreen's change. Yay. Like, you know, good for them. Again, they'll probably help some people. Yeah. And for those that it's not, it's not resonating with, that's fine. I mean, for me, it doesn't resonate complete with me, completely with me in every single way, but that doesn't change my opinion of her as someone who's a great, you know, leader, teacher, helper kind of person. And I, I just respect, you know, whatever choice she'd, she'd like to make on that. And uh, yeah, I, I know that there'll be, there'll be a lot of, uh, I, uh, yeah, just mixed results from that as, as time goes on. But, uh, but yeah, I think Jesus is beautiful. So that's, yeah, that's you a meditation on him. That was really great. Yes. <laughs> Jesus. I was like, oh my God, it's like Mandy Moore. Uh, you remember that saved movie around? <laughs> she was, that was a reminder. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I kind of know what you're talking about, but I have not seen the whole thing. But yeah, oh, I, I, so I love funny. it. I think it's on Netflix now, but yeah, it was funny. And I just think like if, if she was like <laughs> back then, if they were making, because they did a lot of like parodies and like somehow if she was doing something and, I see because the way you're, you know, you sound so wholesome and like, this is a meditation of GI. Somebody didn't know you 
And they went on Facebook, they would think, oh, this is some Christian um, lady that's all about meditation and with Jesus. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was very insightful to how you talk about uh, Jesus. And uh, I figured what you said basically um, his one of his main things. What what was it about Jesus? Is uh, his unconditional love, or I don't forget in the video you're talk you talk a little bit about kind of one of his main you know things that you've grown to know about him. And I think it was either forgiveness or healing. Yes, it's that that unconditional love is so incredibly powerful um, in the way that he embodied it and in the way that it came through him. Um, it was said that he could just walk into a village and uplift the energy of the entire community just because his presence was at such a high level of love. And that radiates an invisible uh, force field um, that just, I think, can remind all of us of our origin because we are, we, our origin is that love. We came from that. That's inside every single one of us. Um, and I think that's part of something that he came to do is empower us to find um, you know, the, the, the presence of God inside of us. I see that in so much of what he um, taught and spoke about. And um, it's, it's incredibly empowering with love that radical and love that, you know, thorough and powerful. Um, you can make miracles happen. Um, and it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's just amazing. So yeah, I, I really resonate with, with Jesus and I love Jesus and I'm, I'm not a, a Christian in the, in the religious sense, but I, I am a, um, a, a true uh, a respecter and uh, I guess a follower of Jesus's teachings. Um, I'd say the difference for me is that I don't, I don't, I don't see or understand worshiping someone, um, you know, for teaching something um, that is profound and that's helpful. It's sort of like, you know, you're spending all of your time focusing on the hand that is pointing at the truth and then you're missing the truth. Um, you know, don't, don't stare at the signpost or else you'll miss the moon that it's pointing at sort of thing. Um, so I, I, I really love his message. I'm about his message and the love he embodied. And you got to realize too that um, he, he was basically too, there's all these versions and he was taken out of content and, you know, I don't think he wanted anybody to worship him. He also says that he was the son of God and then people turn it in like King James's version in that version he was into Trinity. He was into like, you know, three in one gods, King James. And so he said, I want a three in one God. And so translate it that way. And nobody would, would, you know, say, uh, no, but it's, he's just saying he's the son of God. Cause then it, off with your head, have somebody else write my version. And it's about mythology and three in one. So all of a sudden now King James and people are saying, Oh, he's God. He's not the son of God. He's God. So then a lot of it, you know, obviously is just getting changed and dogmatic and it's become man-made instead of like what you're saying. Jesus was, you know, a spiritual teacher. Um, he was a beautiful person and not to really focus and worship on the person, but what the person was saying. And a lot of Christians, they go to church and obviously they don't listen because there's a lot of wars, warmongers, and uh, they have, they're not representing God in any way. They're representing the, the falsity and they're making Christianity look bad. I know one guy... He was very enlightened and he didn't like Christians because he said, dude, they're, they're the ones that are responsible for all these wars and it's all this. And then eventually one day I met him and he realized and told me, you know, now I'm a born again Christian. I was like, oh, wow. And, and, and you know, he just said, so, you know, I realized that, you know, I'm saying these Christians, but it's just these people that are man making and putting something out there that has nothing to do with what Jesus was talking about or anything. Yeah. I was just like, wow, this guy's a Christian. It's crazy. You know, because he's, you know, he was Guru Steve. Like, he just talked about metaphysics and anything and everything. So he was just like us. But then he actually, you know, kind of saw that it was just, you know, it's corrupt. Like Buddha, was, there's not too much corruption in it. So you can look at it and get his insight, his teachings, and, and kind of it's very easily. But he runs parallel with Jesus. You know, they taught the same mm -hmm. thing. He'd be a disciple of Jesus. You know, they'd be boys. They'd be chilling. You know what I'm saying? No. <laughs> so, I, I, yeah, it's... it's it's something to think about, you know, like you said, you, you, and you, you know of all too, if you're into Catholics, you're going to burn in hell. The Lord <laughs> spoke on to, I said, Jesus, you know, like, oh my God, you know, Armageddon is coming and send you money because the angels aren't strike. Jeez. Okay. So anyway, I went off on a little tangent, but it's, it's, uh, 
it's just pretty insightful uh, what you have to say about any and everything, but that's because you're amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you. I, <laughs> I, I, I guess I do my best. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's really an interesting topic. I think once you delve into the idea of religion and that sort of thing, um, I've, I've done so much, um, you know, research throughout my life as a rebellious indigo growing up in Catholic school and going to Catholic church for a very long time. Um, you know, you, there, there's so much that you can find when you dig and you read about the cultural context um, of, you know, Rome for example, being converted to Christianity from paganism and how they had to kind of bridge the gap between these two ideologies by merging, um, you know, different ideas. I just, you know, the more and more I learned and researched about that and, you know, just the way that, um, you know, the Catholic Church, for example, existed as a political body for a very long time, you can kind of understand where um, things got filtered and altered and changed and reshaped over time because, um, you know, Christianity didn't just serve in, you know, Western Europe, for example, as a, um, a source of spiritual knowledge. That's not what it was about. It was a political ruling body. So um, they had to they had to use it for that. So, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of look at that with a lot of um, just acceptance and love and kind of understanding now. I'm sure, you know, there's, there's a time, I think, in my teens where I was very angry at the Catholic Church particularly, um, you know, I think which, 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 which a lot of Catholic school kids kind of go through with the extreme discipline and the, all different things that you experience through that. But, um, you know, I, I came to terms with it and I really decided, like, you know, I, I forgive this and I can see and appreciate the immense beauty that there is in Catholicism, not only in terms of the art and the music and you know so many other things that came out of it but even in the doctrine itself there's there's still just incredible beauty and you know spiritual truth that you can find in these sorts of things um but yeah i think i think it you know if it resonates with 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 a person individually you know just learn as much as you can about that kind of stuff get to an understanding that um just kind of helps you to be at peace with it because um yeah i i, I don't think it is helpful to to be angry at a, at a religion or to blame a specific religion for anything i, I it, that's just that's just not helpful at all i mean in the same way that you know people will blame muslims for you know things that are going on in the world that's just that's it's it's ridiculous because uh, you know Extremely tiny mi minority, um, you know, of Muslims that believe in certain aspects of this extremism that involve vi violence. It's not all of them at all. And um, same thing, you, you can't generalize Christians in the same way, or or Jews, or Buddhists, or anybody. You know, it's we, we're all you know just individual human people that are um, you know following a certain you know lifestyle or belief system out of our own you know very universal human experiences. So I I, I think it's it's good to try to have compassion and just to understand it as deeply as we possibly can. If we seek to understand one another more, I think that's where, um, you know, kind of more good comes in, more peace comes in. Yeah. Exactly. And like you say, there's so much beauty in, in, in these churches and, and so much art. And um, you, may, you probably really will resonate with, uh, with uh, Sonia because she talks about she was raised as, you know, a Catholic. <clears throat> but then she was actually introduced to the world of spirit through all these saints and things, and her her mother, I think, was some type of like, a, um, uh, what do you call, like a Catholic mystic, and so that's why she's kind of viewed too as in one of her titles too is like an American mystic, and so she kind of unveils the beauty of uh, of, of being Catholic and, and all the beautiful things that were there, and how she got introduced to all these saints and <clears throat> through yeah. through through being a Catholic, which you know a lot of people they pretty much get introduced to like a fear-based five cents knowledge of like, you know, don't do this because the old watching eye and, you know, that kind of thing. So it's kind of like she, she took a spin off it, like how you have, you know, at first you're like, what is this? This is such a fear. But then you realize there's a lot of beauty once you, you're not listening to what somebody else is trying to, you know, their agenda. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, I'll send you, I'll send you the, the, that one, uh, ask your guides. On audio. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. I will. I will definitely have to check that out. I think that's a that's a takeaway for me for sure to check that out. <laughs> well, it's, it's been great talking. Um, well, thank you so much for connecting today. It was it was a lot of fun uh, to to talk, and uh, yeah, I, I'd love to do it again sometime. So, uh, sending you lots of love, and again, thank you, thank you for the talk. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, have a good one. Thank you for this. Bye.